Have you ever wondered how people design so beautiful websites with seemingly so low effort? Well, today we will learn how. In this step-by-step -step practical Figma video series, you will learn the nine secrets design professionals use to consistently design beautiful landing pages. All resources used, images, icons, everything, along with the Figma clonable project will be linked in the description below. Today we'll be looking into three secrets. The first being how we research colors, style, and website structure. Then how we take these things and turn them into what I call Frankenstein wireframes. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's alive. And the third thing, which is probably the most important thing, how we don't do the mistake of underestimating copy, text, typography, and assets, because these things will make or break your designs. So let's get into it. The journey should always begin with we should never just rip something right off as that'll, in the best case, give us poor reputation and in the worst case, put us in jail. But Steve Jobs famously popularized Picasso's quote, good artists copy, great artists steal. And what he meant was of course not to literally steal work from others, but to not feel shame when stealing great ideas. So how do we use this piece of advice? Well, we head to our favorite inspiration channels of choice. And when it comes to aesthetics in web design, mine are Lapa.ninja. So this is a curator of beautiful websites. And we have Behance, which is a curator of everything design. Here you'll find everything from color schemes to logos and website concepts. Then of course Dribbble, which is very watered down these days, but still useful when looking at the top artists and, you know, definitely worth mentioning. Then we have Awards, which has a lot of unusable stuff, but definitely a lot of incredible and cool stuff as well. Just make sure to not fall in love with cool but totally unusable things because you'll see a lot of those on awards. So anyways, we start digging. So to keep myself a bit organized when scanning for things, I usually like to separate my inspo search into two categories. So first off, we have look and feel. So that's just, you know, what it sounds like. The general look and feel. What message are we trying to send with our design? Are we going for friendly and fun or techy and minimal or something else. This gives us ideas for shape of the UI, will be rounded or square, illustrations, artwork, imagery, colors to work with. Then we have the structural inspiration. So what sections are we going to use to communicate with our website visitors? what looks good while also being usable. What's great about this is that you oftentimes also get responsive design for free, since you're stealing existing great ideas that have already also been implemented and battle tested. So they have a responsive design already for you. So what I do, I, I begin by just hoarding tabs with Inspo then snap some screenshots of all the things I like in both of the categories. And lastly, I collect my things in a dedicated page in Figma called Inspo. You can structure it in whatever way makes sense for you, but I like keeping the Inspo on one single page. So I combine the look and feel and the structural inspiration in one, one page. Once I've added it all into Figma, I'll just do some quick organizing to collect the ideas. Maybe add some comments to just emphasize different things in the inspo material. And once everything is somewhat organized, I'll filter out my absolute favorites that I see myself using for the designs. 
my favorite color combinations would be the first one. So it's, it's nice to have at least two color palettes to play around with so that you can see kind of what you like in the end because it's pretty easy to change the colors uh, during the iteration process. So having two color palettes is nice. Then choosing my favorite style, so illustrations and or imagery, assets like icons and shapes and typography, etc. And here I'll often add the comments that I mentioned to make sure that I remember what I liked about certain things. And then third is my favorite sections for all the different sections I'll be needing. I'll combine it into frames and then create a page called Explorations. This is where I'll be playing around with all my iterations during the exploration phase. Now, before I jump into the actual iteration work, I will do what I call Frankenstein wireframing. Something that is also the second secret. Frankenstein wireframing is like playing with Legos but your Lego pieces are the different sections from the structural inspiration you collected. This will help you set up a nice looking structure for your web page, as well as getting that responsive design for free, as I mentioned before. P.S. Don't forget the links to the inspo material, because when you wanna go back and see the responsive designs, you gotta know the web pages. So try to save those as well. Now, a typical landing page will have sections like hero, the first interaction with the user, the big sales entry, USPs or value proposition. So a uh, kind of a section just describing what is this all about? Speaking to the person's goals, for example, or the pain points they have. Features how the person will achieve their goals or alleviate their pain points with this service or product. The call to action, getting the user to actually take action, and then a footer. And this is a place to collect all relevant links and the second form of navigation. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the secret so far. I just wanted to chime in super quickly here. What are your favorite resources? What do you use when you find inspiration for websites or landing pages or mobile apps, whatever it is? Comment below, I'll be super happy to read them and engage with you and see what you think are the best resources. I'll just take the sections I like the most and add them to an auto layout. By the way, if you want to learn more about auto layouts, I have a video on them here somewhere. I then resize the sections to a standard kind of desktop width of 1440 pixels and maybe I do some cropping here and there to make it look consistent. Now that the sections are sequenced and it looks good, let's talk a bit about the third secret. One thing that took me years to really understand was how important text and assets are for making your designs pop. So if we start with assets, good images, illustrations, icons, etc., will make or break your designs. Assets typically make up more than 50% of layouts, a number that itself should tell us all that we need to know about why assets are key. So make sure to put a significant amount of time into finding the correct assets to make your design really stand out. Before, it has been pretty hard to get your hands on free assets that actually look truly professional. But nowadays, with a Figma community or online resources like Pexels and Unsplash, and maybe a little tweaking on your own, you can get pretty amazing results. By the way, all resources used in this video series will be linked in the description below. So make sure to check that out. Now for our design, I really like the one color kind of look for illustrations and assets in this case. So having like a bold background to make it pop. I also like the 
subtle background patterns used in this hero and these cards here. They make the design a little more interesting without making it cluttered. What I also like is the use of simple shapes with nice colors, but it would also be nice to maybe use some kind of mock-up to break the flat illustration vibe. I'll use the Figma community to find similar things to this. You just search for things like shape or pattern or mock-up and then you heart your favorites so that you can find them in your community profile later. And by the way, you reach your profile by clicking your avatar in the top right then community profile and likes. Next up, text. So just like the assets, typography and copy will make or break your designs. So together with assets, your text makes up 80 to 90% of your layouts and they should be respected equally as much as your assets or even more in some cases. We have great free typography resources, or I should say resource in Google Fonts. And then we have affordable ones like Adobe Fonts or My Fonts and yeah, many others. TypeWolf is a great way for finding matching font pairs, but I usually try to find a similar font to the ones I find in my inspo material. You can use what the font to find a similar font or see the exact font by just inspecting the page. However, be careful not to go crazy with your fonts. It's really hard to get the fonts right, especially if you're a beginner. It's taken me many, many, many years to really start understanding fonts, but you have some fonts that will always kind of look good. So you're always better off going with more popular safe options that have been tested to work well. Free options here would include when it comes to Sans fonts, you would have Inter, you would have DM Sans, you have Montserrat and Poppins. Then we have the Serif fonts, we have Meriwether, we have Laura, the Source Serif Pro. When it comes to copy, it's an art of its own and a career of its own. But for the sake of aesthetics, what we need to think about is how the copy fits into our layout. So one layout might look great with two words, but shy with four. Once again here, I suggest sticking as close as possible to what your inspiration design uses. Now for our design, I really love the style of the font used by Glide. But it's hard, if not impossible, to find something as unique and carefully balanced as this one for free. And even paid, it seems. You'll find some paid alternatives and what the font, but none of them really compares to the real one. The closest we'll get on a budget in this case, I think, is either Enter or DM Sans. So let's keep them both in our tool belt so that we can decide which one we like the best later. Well, that's a lot. It's not all though. In the upcoming video, we will be looking at how we use Figma to design these beautiful landing pages using a couple of design hacks and a couple of key design principles. If you feel that this has been helpful in any way or form, please consider hitting the subscribe button or maybe the like button or maybe, I don't know, the bell notification, whatever. Maybe a comment or all of them. It would be super appreciated. Until the next one, I wish you not a Merry Christmas because that's not yet, but I wish you a happy day, a happy night, whatever it is at your place. We'll talk in the next one. Ciao.